Age 16. Height 5 foot 6. Weight 114. Hair blonde, eyes blue. Jackie Boone, age 16. Height 5 feet 5 inches. Weight 128 pounds. Hair brown, eyes brown. The last scene, they were driving a large truck, license number 20832. Give me long distance. about signing your resignation. And shoulder the blame for everything that's happened here tonight? These three runaways were girls you've been working with. This Guerrero girl was another one, wasn't she? You've been waiting for something like this for all of the last six months, haven't you? If you don't resign, there will be an investigation. When the papers get through with you, though... There won't be an agency in the country that'll have me. I know. On the other hand, if you quit, you quit quietly. Maybe after a while you can get yourself another job, out of state. You can save yourself for more of these. Experiments. No more bargains, Mr. Riggs. Never again. Now look here. Go on, calling you at the state board. I'm not quitting. Hello. Hello. A hundred and eighty human lives. What happens to them now? Jane, Jackie, Loretta, runaways, the police after them, and Dolores, the four girls I've tried the most to help. Where was I wrong? What could I have done differently? I was so confident that first day, coming in on the depot train. At Army Rehabilitation Center, I treated combat casualties. I was on my way to a corrective school to treat adolescents, social casualties. I'd arranged to arrive with a new group of girls. I wanted to see their first reaction to the place. No walls, no fences. I guess they were wondering, what's the gag? Riggs was superintendent of Elmview at the neighboring boys' trade school. He asked the girls for their cooperation. They were here to be helped, not punished. But I knew they'd never in all their lives met an adult whom they could trust. I'd read their case histories in juvenile court. Loretta Wilson. Reason for commitment, vagrancy. Dolores Guerrero, vagrancy. Jackie Boone and Jane Fleming arrested together for stealing. Food. Well, getting their trust would be my job. Thank goodness this was a new school. Not like a prison. No stone walls. I didn't know then about the human wall. All right, girls, let's hurry. You're going to get these clothes off and get new uniforms in that building over there. All right, now, line up by twos. You too. All right, ready? Left, right, left. Right, keep moving. Get in line, girls. Left, right, left. Quit straggling, girls. Keep in line. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now watch those other girls. See how they do it. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Eyes forward. Keep moving. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Look where you're going. Keep moving, girls. Don't stop. Left, right, left, right. Get in line, girls.
with this joint. Hey, Susie, she don't like our country club. Oh, stick around, sister. You'll learn to love it. Stool pigeon. See her? She took off last night. Now she's got to serve her time all over again. How long you in for? One year. Time off for good behavior. That chance. What'd they get you on? You want to bet? Hard I know it was copper. No kidding. Did you fall for that old routine? Get it. Hey. it was <laughs> Hey, kids, watch it. You must come. Confined, trapped. Girls who've spent most of their lives running away. Away from intolerable situations, from school, from their families, or from themselves. Glad it isn't you. Keep your mouth shut. Most of you have sense enough not to try to run away. But I've read the history on Dolores. It's going to be hard for her to learn. <laughs> She wouldn't get up and go to work with the other girls. She didn't even seem to hear us. She just stays there in bed telling the craziest lies. Who is it? Guerrero, reception wing. Mind if I come? I'm afraid this is a psychotic who should never have been sent to us. Well, if you wish. Dolores. 
your friends are up working, don't you think you should be working too? Do you think it's fair for your friends to be doing your work, and you in bed? Look at me, Dolores. Answer me. Miss Levering, it's no good lecturing a girl in this state. You must win her confidence, get her to help herself. Of course, with 180 girls to take care of, you've got all the time in the world. I'll find time. It'll be better if there weren't too many of us. May I remain? If you'll sit quietly over there. Beautiful hair you've got, Dolores. Dolores. Miss Levering and I want to be your friends. We want to see if there's anything we can do to make you happier here. I don't mind. Only I'm not staying here. No. The other girls have to stay. They've done something bad. But I leave today. My train is waiting. You know, I bet you started running away when you were a little girl. Am I right? Remember the very first time you ran away? It was wonderful, wasn't it? I was in the second grade. Our neighbor gave me 25 cents to go buy some bread and milk at the store, but I... Well, how did you spend it? I got on the yellow street car. I rode all the way across town to the end of the line, all by myself. It was nice there. Pretty homes, with gardens. Then I came back again. You know, I have a hunch that something else pretty important happened that day, before the trolley ride. I don't remember. Was it a school day? I wasn't doing too good in my schoolwork. The teacher sent home an note for Mother to come see her. And? My mother couldn't speak English. She didn't know what the teacher was talking about. The children. They laughed. They laughed at me. They laughed. I was so glad I wouldn't talk to Mother. When she went back home, I wouldn't say goodbye to her. The teacher was mad, too. She acted like Mother didn't understand her purpose. It was very silly of the teacher. Very silly of the other children, too, to laugh. Last night, did anyone laugh at you? I'm very different from my parents. People say we don't even look related. I don't suppose you've ever been in Pennsylvania, have you? Well, my family came home from Poland, oh, long before you were born. My father and his brothers got jobs in the coal mines, near a little place with a, with a funny name, Nanty Coke. No smoking. Oh, thank you, Rose. Of course. Do you know, to the day he died, my father never learned to speak English. In school, I wanted so much to be just like the other American kids. But I was ashamed to take them to the house, because they would hear my father talking Polish. But after he died, I, I forgot all about the language. I only remembered how kind he'd been to me. How he'd come home so tired because he had worked double shifts, making money to buy me an education. He such a good man. I never needed to be ashamed of him. Now suppose you were living with people who really cared for you and, and wanted to make you happy. You wouldn't need to get on a train and run away, would you? I guess not. And you wouldn't need to run away in your mind either. You wouldn't need to make believe. I would like to get up now.
She believes all the stories she tells. If she were punished for lying, she'd only escape farther into fantasy. The aliens to Juvenile Hall wouldn't have sent her here if she hadn't been sane, Dr. Jason. Of course she's sane, but she can't stand pressure. If a situation becomes intolerable, she, she's got to get out one way or another. Yes, I see your point. What would you recommend, Dr. Jason? A light academic program until we can help her get confidence. And some occupational therapy that's pleasant and not too exacting. All right, we'll take care of it, Dr. Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ritz. take to assemble the pieces? How does Helen interpret these pictures? My first 24 hours here were so filled with this kind of psychometric test that I was never able to leave the office. Miss Levering helped me, despite her own duties as assistant superintendent. She helped me most efficiently. And yet... You know, I get the feeling you don't approve of me or anything I'm doing. What are you doing? What do you think I should do? Dr. Jason, before you came here, I was the one the girls came to if they had any problems. And now have usurped their confidence, taken your place? That's not what I said. The girls knew they could talk to me and that I would do what I could to help them. But I never made them promises that couldn't be kept. And I have? Yes, Doctor, you have. Now, for going on here? He said he'd help me get away and then he wouldn't keep his part of the bargain, the dirty... You think I'd be crazy enough to take a girl out of a place like this? She's a lying little... Quiet, everyone. You'll get paid for your windshield. The school will take care of it. Now get out of here. You heard him. Get out of here. And you'll pay back yeah. the school by working double time in the laundry. What? For trying to get away, you'll serve your full sentence. Mr. Rings, will you let me handle this, please? Well, suppose we have Miss Levering sit in with us. She's familiar with all our procedure, Dr. Jason. I'll try to be unobtrusive. Come, Loretta. Back to work. Back to work, everyone. Back to work. Back to work. Back for you. She was so pretty, so full of spirit. One couldn't help reacting to her. At least, uh, I reacted. And so did Miss Levering. I got a sketchy history of her childhood. She was only seven when her mother died of tuberculosis. And when she was sick, I used to play dress-up in her clothes. And this once I broke the heel on her best gold shoes. So when Dad told me she was dead, I felt sort of glad. Later on, did you ever feel guilty about being glad? No, I just figured she wouldn't find out about the shoes and punish me. I see. You get along pretty well with people. Men like me. 
women don't. And your father was a man. Oh, he spoiled me rotten. As soon as I found out how to handle him. That was the trick. Well, Mother must have kept the lid on him, because when she died, he hit the bottle. Good thing I was old enough to know how to use a can opener. A lot of times I'd have starved. At first, when he was drunk, he didn't pay me any mind at all. After that, you and your father got along fine. Uh-huh. Until he died. What did you do later? Just bummed around. Anything special? Uh-uh. How about your marriage? Don't you think it's important enough to mention? Oh, he turned out to be a jerk. You weren't in love with him? I like a lot of guys. For a little while. Uh, when you left him, did you know you were going to have a baby? What's it to you? I just wondered how you figured you'd support a child. You figure I'd have to. Did you ever think about keeping the baby? At the maternity home, they tried to get me to. But I just told them not to bring it back in the room anymore. You thought you might get to like the baby. Don't be so smart. You never catch me saddling myself with a kid. I wonder how tough it must have been for you to decide to give up your boy. We well, you can just keep on wondering. Listen, mister, that kid meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. Don't be afraid of anything you tell me, Loretta. It's strictly between ourselves. Yeah, then what's she doing here? My interest in this interview is purely professional. She may think she's professional, but I know better. You do? I've seen dames like her around, social workers. They talk like a public library, but sooner or later they find out they're really women. Pride! So I'm not spitting any more secrets with her around. Can I go now? Sure. I'd like to talk to you again in the next few days. I'd like to talk to you, too. You like being outdoors? Sometimes. Good. I'll suggest it to Mr. Riggs. If we're really alone next time, I'll tell you anything you want to hear. Very interesting girl. Very. No guilt whatever, did you notice? I did. Actually, within herself, she's perfectly adjusted. I'm interested in your definition of adjusted. No inhibitions, like a savage. A child who's had to use sex as a, as a defense, as a weapon to, to get what she needs. What she wants. She must learn to, to identify with, to feel warm towards someone who is morally acceptable to society. Yourself, naturally? <laughs> That's what the umpire used to call a bean ball. You mean that... Oh, no. No. I'm going to recommend to Mr. Riggs that she be given outdoor work, sports, to, to build up her fellowship with other girls. That's fine. That to sound nice on paper. Miss Levering, that's the third time you've said something like that. You think because you say jump, this whole institution is going to jump. Well, you can make recommendations until you're blue in the face, Dr. Jason, but it won't change anything. There is nothing you can do. I wish there were. There is lose control of themselves, we put them in meditation. This is one of our meditation rooms. Where are we going? No! Not by 
myself. Please, please. Oh, let me out. Please, please don't leave me here. Don't leave me alone. Please, oh, please don't go. it won't happen again. It's no good being alone, especially for you two. You've had so much of it. You never knew your own parents? The orphanage just said they didn't have my records. How about you, Jay? No. no, her old man's alive, but he's never even seen her. Would you like to see him, Jay? Why no. should she? What's he ever done for her? Let Jay tell me, please. Well, I'd like to see him. But I wouldn't want him to see me. No? Not in this place. Let's see. The first home you remember was the orphanage in San Antonio? What was it like? They all stink. Now, let's see. You were 14 when you met. Yeah, on a farm up the north part of Jersey. And you became friends right away? Well, she couldn't look out for herself. There was a slob running the place, see? Well, one day when his wife went into town... up the road and hitched a ride. And that was the end of Jersey. Jane. It's all right. Jane, and then you just wandered from place to place? No, we worked some when we could lie about our ages. Now, Jackie, I'm going to ask Jane a few questions, and I want her to answer them. So far, you've done all the talking. Jane. Don't let him bully you, kid. It's my job to help you grow up and think for yourself, and I want you to start right now. Now, what kind of work would you like to do when you get out of here? Well, sometimes I think I'd like to go to beauty college. Or maybe not. Did you ever try doing anything that Jackie didn't want, or going anywhere she didn't want? Didn't want her to get mad at me. Well, I'm afraid she's going to be pretty mad at you about this beautician's course, but think what's best for you and what you want to do. Now, what are you going to do when you leave here? Go to beauty college. Good. And I'm going to talk to Jackie alone. Let's see, where are your girls now? Sewing class. Do you think you can make it by yourself? I'm sorry if I made you angry, Jackie. But we both want what's best for Jane, don't we? When you were arrested, you had a gun. But you never used it. Are you afraid without it? Listen, mister, let's get this straight. I'm not like Jane. You can scare her. She cries. But not you? I'm not afraid of anything or anybody. I never cried in my life. Really? I've been afraid. Back home when the whistles blew the accident signal at the mines. Afraid of leaving for college for a new place. I've been afraid of being alone. A lot of people are afraid of being alone. Don't you mind your own business? What's the good of asking us a lot of dumb questions and then sending us out to dig for ten hours a day? Ten hours? Where do you think I got these, mister? Sunbathing on the beach? Square. 
liar. Liar, dirty liar, handing us a line of junk just so you can come around and snoop on us. Dirty, double-crossing, no-good liar. Dirty liar, dirty liar. It won't happen again, Loretta. Now come on with that basket. Put it in there. Now go over and get the other one. Come on. Make it snappy. Just put the girl in hospital. Dolores Guerrero. Sit down, Dr. Jason. Join us. One reason for these conferences is for each staff member to integrate his policy with the central authority. Otherwise, he's liable to go off and do things that cause trouble to, to other members. Not one of my recommendations has been carried out. Oh, come now. That's a pretty broad statement. Broad statement. Loretta Wilson. I recommended competitive sports. I found her lifting 50-pound sacks of potatoes. One of my girls is in the sewing room in a state of complete frustration. She can't handle machines. Very valuable therapy, the sewing room. It teaches girls a trade. But the same girl was hysterical a few hours ago, locked up in solitary confinement. Meditation, Dr. Jason. A disturbed girl needs to be isolated. It uh, protects the others. And the laundry room. What kind of therapy do you call that? Well, there are a lot of unpleasant jobs in the world. There have to be people to do them. But they're not adults, they're children. Were they sent here to be healed or to have a profit sweated out of them? Is that what you meant? Meant? That I was making promises that, that couldn't be kept and you wished I could do something about it. I'm afraid you misunderstood me, Dr. Jason. Mind you, I'm not opposed to an occasional experiment, but we must operate within our budget. There's no time to pamper individual problem children. They must be given group discipline. I don't see how I can operate this way. I can't do the girls any good. Frankly, Dr. Jason, taking on a psychiatrist was not my idea. The state authority sent you here without consulting me. Because, Mr. Riggs, as I've since found out, you have the highest number of returnees in the East. If you want to leave, Dr. Jason, that's your privilege. I see. Look. I've had a lot of experience in penal institutions. Believe me, your whole approach is impractical. You mean you can't change human nature? Well, most of these girls will be arrested again before they're out of here a year. Or oh, why be sentimental about congenital criminals? It's in their blood, of course. Tell me, Mr. Riggs, what do you propose to do for these girls? Give them custodial care punish them when necessary, and teach them to respect authority. I think that's something we can all learn, Dr. Jason. Thank goodness this was a new school, not like a prison, no stone walls. Jason? Hi there. Taking your day off in town? Yep. Ought to stay around for visitors' day. I uh hear you may be leaving for good. Things get around fast, don't they? Well. Thank you, sir. 
lose your temper, you miss your aim. Good evening. Looks just like him, doesn't it? Good shot. Captain of the softball team. Fine, 42. Take your choice, lady. Yes, 26. Hey, what's the idea? <laughs> Are you really leaving us, Dr. Jason? I've been pounding the pavement all day trying to figure out an alternative, but that is not. Would you like a hot dog? No, thank you. Okay. Girls will forget soon enough. They're, they're used to disappointing. It was a great mistake appealing to you in staff meeting this morning. I thought you'd bear me out. And lose my job? What good would that have done the girl? What good are you doing now? A little. At least I like to think so. I'm afraid you don't understand the problem of social work, Dr. Jason. But Rick says your idea of a sound approach. At least he's realistic. When you're short of staff and money, you've got to work with groups. Well, I was an idealist once like you. I should have known you then. Dr. Jason, until I came here, I never knew what part of the country I'd be in from one year to the next. I've never had much time for a life of my own, but, but I have learned a lot about the lives of girls like ours. The alleys they play in when they're little, their homes and their gangs. What good can we do a girl here when, when she goes back to the same environment that, that made her this way, this way in the first place? Take little Dolores. How will she be treated on the outside? What kind of jobs will be open for a girl like her? Best place. What are you doing about that, Dr. Jason? If Dolores were able to live with herself, she'd be better equipped to face the kind of life she'll find on the outside. Hmm. Every time I bring a girl one step forward, Briggs and the institution would pull her back. You can break your heart for just so long. Then you begin to compromise. I do what I can with an existing framework. One compromise after the other until you're fighting on the enemy's side. Oh. Sit down, lady. Wait till it stops. You can't work within this framework. It's more than rigs. It's a whole system. You've got to fight it. And, and, and leaving it is your idea of fighting it, Doctor? Where? Who are you to judge anyway? I've spent every shred of my time and emotions on these girls. I've lived every girl's life. Why? Afraid of your own emotions? Save that for your patience. Wait till it stops, lady. Do you want to break your neck? Why don't you try living your own life for a while? You might find it highly enjoyable. I warned you, lady. You can't sue me. Are you hurt? Stay away from me. Hello, lady. You look like you need a lamp. No way. <laughs> Here. That was for me. some time, girls. But judging from the lack of discipline I observed this afternoon, maybe I'm neglecting my duty. I'm afraid things are getting a little lax around here. We can't nail pictures up here, girl. It's defacing public property. Take it down, girl. Take it down. This thing. Dust catches. These things mark up the wall. You girls must learn to take better care of your quarters. Come on now. Let's keep you girls. 
You'll have to take it down. Oh, you. Come on, this side too. You hear what I said from the other girl? Take these things down. Very good, child. What is this? this stuff down and get rid of it. When one girl has something the rest don't, it makes the others dissatisfied. Now let's make sure we don't accumulate any more trash. Let's grow up. give you one last chance. Who started that fire?
been restored by the proper use of discipline. Oh, sit down, Jason. I'm just finishing my report to the state authority on the fire. Did you know that Bureau was using a fire hose on those girls? She what? You'll put that in your report, or I'll file a report of my own. Dr. Jason, the board has known me and my work for many years. They would never believe any such cock and bull story. And I was there. I saw it. Be your word against mine. Miss Levering was there, too. Miss Levering has been with me for a good many years. She wouldn't say anything to discredit the school, would you? How about it now, Miss Levering? I've never seen Mr. Riggs mistreat the girls. He employed Satis to do it for him. Employed Satis to do it for him. He provokes the girls to the point of rebellion and then punishes them for rebelling. Put that in your report, too. You've robbed these girls of every ounce of dignity. You've, you've worked and threatened them until they're turning into wild animals. we will better file a report of our own. Just a moment, Dr. Jason, please. Suppose you do file a report. Have you thought what will happen? There will be a great big noise for a little while. Bad publicity. Muckraking reporters traipsing through the place make the girls feel as if they're in a goldfish bowl. Of course, you'll be in the bowl, too. Um, that's true. I may lose my job. May. That's a matter of opinion. However, suppose I do. Suppose the board puts someone in my job who's even further from your way of thinking. You see, it may not come out the way you want it to at all. Very well, Mr. Riggs. We won't file our report. You want to keep your job? Keep it. Do the personnel work. Keep the books. But we will plan the program. We'll set up the working conditions. And if someone needs discipline, we'll decide that too. And no interference from you or Miss Bueller. I guess it's your school, Dr. Jason. help a girl's morale, make her feel like a human being. We began a real occupational therapy taught them skills they could use outside, skills they were anxious to learn. We gave them cultural recreation, too. Some girls are more aggressive than others. Well, it takes aggression to put out a newspaper and keep it operating. These girls used to spend their energy breaking things. Sometimes they still did. But they didn't have much energy left after an afternoon of softball. All right, that was a bit of a problem sometimes. So was Dolores. She still lived in a world of her own. No contact with other girls. Then, one afternoon, it wasn't all clear sailing. I know we're way over budget. We've had a lot of new equipment to buy. The first month of any program is bound to cost money. I just wanted to draw it to your attention, Dr. Jason. But, Mr. Rich, we can't go on. Ladies, there's no use bringing your complaints to me. The board isn't going to fire him. I'm blessed with real trouble. Oh. 
When the depot train came through again, taking some girls home and bringing new ones to the prisons and the reformatories throughout the country, our new arrivals were matched by the girls who were ready to go. But the ones who were left behind in school must be thinking of the months ahead. We didn't want them to be lonely months. And so, Ms. Levering and I wrote letters, made long-distance phone calls. Between us, we even raised enough money to buy a round-trip bus ticket for one of the parents. And when the next visitor's day came... Jane. My father. I wouldn't know him if I met him on the street. You're looking fine. Thanks. So are you. I, I, I didn't think I'd see you looking so good. You see, Did I... You... Go ahead. Oh, wasn't anything. Say what you were going to. <laughs> you look just fine. When are you okay? Okay, no, 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 What did you say about me? Uh, I said, poor man, he doesn't know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> 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 Don't tell me I have a visitor. Nobody would walk across the street to pay me a call. But we'd go calling ourselves. Good afternoon, girl. What's the gag? Oh, it's a couple of hours drive. We have some business to attend to. Dr. Jason coming with us? No. Oh. I uh, thought this would be a good day to pay a visit to the Faith Elliott Maternity Home. Oh, no, we don't. The reason is Dr. Jason asked me to. Then why didn't he take me himself? Or did you fix it so he wouldn't? Why don't you get it through your head? I don't want to be bothered with that brat. I don't see how anyone could be so cold-blooded about her own baby. Cold-blooded? Look who's talking. Lady, you're the original jellyfish. I'm sorry. I had no right to be personal. If that's the way you feel, you may go back to the reception wing. Cold-blooded. Can you tie that? You spend six days a week looking starry-eyed at the doctor. Loretta, I said I was sorry. But you're afraid to come out of your igloo and make a pass at him. Loretta, that will be enough. <laughs> I gather you didn't want to visit your baby. He thought I'd get mushy and want to keep him. The maternity home is an offer for adoption. You have to sign papers. But we hope you want to see your child first to be sure that you know what you're giving up. Just give me the papers. I'll sign them right now. Look, Loretta, for you, for any woman, there is no bigger experience than having a child. <laughs> you said it. Lost me my job, got me messed up for the law. All right. But you've been through it. Why leave yourself nothing to show for it? Why rob yourself? It's my life. A baby has a life, too. If he gets to the wrong home, he'll soon be shuffled back to the nursery. And don't think those babies don't know what's happening. A baby gets lonely, too. You know, I, I like to talk to you. We kids get a big kick out of it whenever you ask us to come up to the office. Well, thank you. A lot of the girls miss having dates. Stuff like that. But I couldn't go for those young punks. Not anymore. Some of the girls say you haven't any favorites. Do you? Is there any girl you like more than the rest? Loretta, we were talking about you. Well, aren't I your favorite? Yes. One of them. I think you'd have a lot of love to offer a child or, or a husband. It's just a matter of, 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 of uh, learning a little control. You have everything else, the love, the vigor, the intelligence. I have faith in you to make a wonderful mother and wife. Mm, 
Now, uh, now think about it. I don't mean to think about it. came to me rather forcibly how lonely for boys to girls must get. Shut away here month after month, a very unnatural life. Very unnatural. Hmm? What would you think of a dance every so often? Something for them to look forward to and to think about a long time afterward. Briggs could send over the honor boys from trade school. What are you doing? Dr. Jason, I'm going to resign. What? For the first time in my entire professional career, I, I lost control of myself. Loretta? Oh, well. No matter what the provocation, a, a person has no right to do social work if she loses her objectivity. To tell you the truth, she had my uh, objectivity is slipping pretty fast for a while. I lost my temper. I, I was so angry I didn't know what I was doing. Now, resigning is out of the question. I couldn't get along without you. Now, how did it all start? It really doesn't matter, does it? Well, what did she say? Come on, tell me. She said I was in love with you. Oh? Ridiculous. Yes, isn't it? No wonder you were upset. Girls get these ideas, you know. She, she doesn't realize how busy we've been. We haven't had time to, to think of each other in a, in a personal way. That's right. As a matter of fact, it uh, would have made much more sense if, if she had accused me of being in love with you. I mean, uh, uh, you're such an attractive woman. Uh, it's just that we didn't have time. You don't have to explain anything? Oh, but I do. I guess I'm rather clumsy, but... Very clumsy. The night of the dance, the girls made a solemn agreement about the only showers. Morris, your hair's beautiful. Gee, you look super. Let me see you. Oh, you look fine. Oh, this is all dopey. <laughs> hey, look, Pike, you! Where'd you get it? From Beulah's room. Oh, you're gonna get the jewelry, Ashton. Well, I only borrowed it. But suppose she finds out. Why yeah, should she? Well, she can smell, can't she? Oh, we'll only use a few drops. Sure, my will sure. be waiting till I'm that scarecrow. Well, give me some. I smell like sewing machine oil. Even yeah. our best friend wouldn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the queen of the base doll. Oh, they're crazy. Oh, <laughs> Don't look, I'm gonna stand around smelling the back of your ears. Hey, 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 come on, come on. Man, I can die happy. All right, girls, it's time to come downstairs. You like my dress, Miss Beulah? See, I'm sure looking forward to the party. Drop that bottle up here. Now, Dolores, you're going to tell me who stole that perfume. We all used it. I know. But who came to my room and stole it? Take your hands off me. I don't belong here. I haven't done anything wrong like the other girls. I'm going away on a train, and wherever I go, I'll tell people about you. How you hurt girls when you have no right. Wherever I go, wherever I go, I'll tell everyone.
All right, girl. Let's all go downstairs and have a good time. Now hurry up. Hello, Belle. How about some decoration? You look lovely, and Mary, what a pretty dress. Hello, Dr. Jacob. Look up monkey acting so grand up there. Why don't you come down and join us? So you so stuck to us. No. Look over there. Just waiting for someone to make a false step. Preferably us. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, kids, the next dance is a lady's choice, soft and slow. Would you like to dance, Dr. Jason? Sure, delighted. Is your hair different or something? You seem quite changed tonight. I'm so used to seeing you in business suits and things. Do you know what I thought the day I met you? I thought there, if she chose, would be a lovely looking woman. Why did you go to such length to, to conceal all this, this charm? Please, don't tease me, Dr. Jason. I, I'm so unused to compliments, I'm, I'm afraid I take them seriously. I mean them seriously. Lady's choice, Doctor. Sorry, Miss Levering. Oh, Miss Levering. Right. Your punch bowl's empty again. I've been putting water in until you could wash in it. I'll get some more. I'll go with you. There's no one left to dance with but the goons anyway. Everybody watching. Something important? Could you come outside with me? Well. Just for a few minutes. It's about the baby. Well, in that case, all right. Nice out here. Mm. There was something about the baby? I've decided to keep him if you want me to. Oh, that makes me very happy, Loretta. From now on, I, I want to do whatever you want me to do. That's the way I feel about you. It's funny, I, I never wanted to make plans, get married. I mean, you said I, I'd make a wonderful wife and mother. Nobody ever thought that way about me before. I, I felt all funny. Oh, you didn't need to say that the way I feel. But since you did, I just want to be the kind of girl you want for a wife. Loretta, you didn't understand what I meant. I know what you said. Come here. I'll tell you a big secret, Loretta. Now sit down. You're the loveliest girl I've ever seen in my life. You are something that many men dream about and never expect to really need. Maybe I too let myself go on dreaming for a while, but I wouldn't be the right husband for you at all. You don't want to hurt her, is that it? 
Well, neither do I, honest. I used to want to hurt her when I was jealous of her, but I don't anymore. No. I'm not as bright as she is, but I can try to learn if that's what you want. There is nothing wrong with you. It's me. I'm quite a bit older than you, you know. If you insist, I'll confess to just how many years. And besides, I'm, I'm the only man you've seen around here. You feel quite different when you've been out a while. Is it because I've kicked around so much? No, of course not. You're not the girl that came here a few months ago. You've changed, and I'm proud of the way you've changed. You're wrong about me. I haven't changed, not one bit. I don't want that kid. I, I don't want to be anybody's wife and mother. I, I just want to go back to what I was before. You can't go back to the girl you were before, Loretta. No one ever goes back. <laughs> you don't know what goes on inside me or anybody else. Just a tramp. That's what I'm going to be when I get out of here. And I hope to God it's quick. <laughs> to go back. Dr. Jason, Miss Leverett, you're under suspension. Miss Bueller, will you take over the cottage, please? All right, girls, line up. Turn off that photograph, boys. All privileges cancelled. I advise that move silence until the girls calm down. If any of the girls are still disturbed, give them a day or two in meditation. I'm sick of the disorganization around here. Insubordinates have terrible girls. You see where they're coming to. in the mess hall. Would you like some? The girls on the kitchen detail saw your light and they knew you were in trouble. You're not blaming yourself, are you? There is nobody else to blame. Yesterday when I saw Dolores, I told myself she was safe. She was adjusted. What she did last night was insane. Cut off her own hair and then killed herself. Then it was inevitable. Nobody could have done any more for her. Nothing is inevitable. I was just an optimistic, blundering fool, that's all. Did you see Riggs? What are you going to do? Whatever you do. There's nothing so useless as an unemployed social worker, is there? I'm sorry I cost you your job. Working with you has been worth a dozen jobs. very much being the wife of an unemployed psychiatrist. Under the circumstances, I'd be very proud. Dr. 
Jackie yet? Aren't they with you? No, I tried to catch the truck. It went too fast. I've been hiding. She's half frozen. Let's take her in and get her some hot coffee. Yes. Here, put this on. Jane, you were with Dolores last night before the dance, weren't you? We were all together. Were you with her when she cut off her hair? She didn't cut her hair. What? Spuler cut it. Dolores wouldn't tell who stole the perfume. Bueller cut it. Jane, don't worry about Jackie. Don't you worry about anything. And furthermore, until recently, the school had the highest percentage of returnees in the East. Why? Because the girls were taught only menial jobs. Their self-respect was destroyed. Some became so institutionalized, they'll never adjust to a free environment. Every device was used to, to rob the girls of their individuality, to humiliate them. And if they rebelled, they were bullied into submission. Gentlemen, these are pretty hysterical accusations. You want proof, something specific. Our girl killed herself last night because this matron viciously cut off her hair. Unfortunately, the girl is not here herself to tell us what happened or how she felt, gentlemen. I'm afraid this is inconclusive. Inconclusive? Mr. Chairman, may I call witnesses? Here are their names. In June of this year, eight of our girls were punished with a fire hose. Let them tell you about it. I was with Dr. Jason the night of the fire. We both saw the fire hose being used to punish the girl. For several years, Miss Levering was one of our best workers. But since Dr. Jason came, I don't like to bring personal matters into this investigation, but I'm afraid her testimony is going to be colored by her emotions, not to say her relationship with this man. Gentlemen. I'm going to marry him, is that what you mean? You see, I think we must disregard her whole testimony, gentlemen. Tell us, Jane, what you told me about Dolores, about Miss Bueller cutting off her hair. Miss Bueller didn't cut Dolores's hair. Jane, you don't need to be frightened. I won't let anybody hurt you. Just tell us what happened. I've told you. Can I go, please? Yes, thank you. Gentlemen, this girl has been intimidated. She's afraid to talk. You were in the reception cottage the night of the fire. What happened? Gloria, these gentlemen want to know the truth. They want to help you. You don't have to be afraid if you tell the truth. No. Nothing happened. But Gloria! Did Miss Bueller ever use a fire hose to punish any of you? No. No, never. One moment, please. Hey, look. Boy, you'd think they'd have the nerve to stand up for that guy. What a bunch of weak sisters. Bueller must have given them the old one, too. Oh, wouldn't I open my mouth if I was there? But we're not there. Right. And, and we can't go back. Right. I mean, a girl would be crazy to go back. Yeah, and serve her time all over again? Who said anything about going back? You're crazy. Of course not. I didn't say anything. Shh. Figure the cops have found the truck yet. We better make it snappy. Wish we didn't have to stop here. How else are we ever going to get the dough? You want to walk to Chicago? You go in there and give the nurse a pitch. I'll stay here and keep an eye out. Go on. Yes? I'm Loretta Wilson. You have some adoption papers for me to sign. Oh, yes, come in. My friend and I have been looking for a job with... We were wondering if the home could help us out with a little dough. Just till we get located. Hmm? Oh, you sit there. I'll be right back. The parents' adoption papers are in the nursery file. When I was here before, they, they used to give the girls a few bucks just to tide them over until... Hey, I didn't want to see him. Well, he won't bite you. We call him Butchie. The nurse girl's been trying to give him a finger wave. 
Here, hold them while I find the papers. Here, Butchie. But... Please, you take them. I don't want them. As I remember, the couple who want him haven't any children of their own, and they're very eager. He's a contractor, I think, and both Presbyterians. And they own their own home, although there are two mortgages on it. Gosh, there's it isn't here. Must be in a more current file. I'll be back. You. What a pest you turned out to be. You better sit over there, brother. For Pete's sake, don't cry. Mess up my life, you get me in trouble with the cops. Right down that hall, you gave me the worst 24 hours I ever had. Now you expect me to hold you on my lap and pretend like I like you? Well, I don't. I not only don't like you, I, I hate the sight of you. I hate kids, always have. <coughs> Where's that dame gone, anyway? Hey! Don't go fall on the floor. Cut it out. Cut it out. What a pair of lungs you've got. Just imagine having that around all the time. Just imagine. Tell that little mother out there to quit curling your hair. You're be a great big kid. You don't want anybody making a sissy out of you. Well, do you like me? It doesn't matter whether you like me or not. Are you going to like that contract with the two mortgages? Are they going to like you the way you are? Are they going to frizzy up old fancy and make a sissy out of you? <laughs> Gosh almighty, you feel so good. You can't go back to the girl you were before, Loretta. No one ever goes back. Hello, Butchie. Hello, Butchie. I'm afraid we're all agreed that your charges against Mr. Riggs have been without substantiation. On the contrary, the evidence indicates that your whole con... Let me go, let me go. Let me go. I caught the runaways, Mr. Riggs. They caught us nothing. We were walking in on our own two feet. Gentlemen, the findings are all in. I don't think these girls can oh, add anything. Can't we? These two are the worst troublemakers in the outfit. Oh, they did return to their own free will. I think we ought to hear what they have to say. In the first place, Beulah did use a fire hose on us. If you bring my so-called friend Jane in, she'll tell you the same thing. She darn near drowned. Oh, the kid's got pleurisy. You can look it up in the nurse's record. Hello? Uh, this is Dr. Jason. Yes, sir? Send the girls from reception wing to Mr. Riggs's office immediately. Yes, Dr. Jason. You have a long sentence now for running away. You know that, don't you? Well, you know how I feel about girls who lie. I don't want you to tell any rash lies about Miss Bueller and me. We'll do the interrogating, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Riggs. What is your feeling about Dr. Jason? We came back to get him out of a spot, didn't we? 
guy makes you feel like people again, you, you don't want to see him pushed around. We're going to ask you the same things we asked you yesterday. And we want you to answer carefully, Jane. Were you punished after the fire? Go on, tell him. Yes. How, Jane? With a fire hose. Oh, come now. And Dolores, Jane. Miss Bueller was trying to scare her. She took those old sewing shears from me. Why didn't you say so yesterday? I was afraid to. Why, Jane? Miss Bueller told me not to. Just told you? Is that all she did? No. Not all. <gasps> demand the arrest and punishment of the man and woman responsible for this. Well, the depot train's due in again. That means a new batch of problems. Most of our old girls are ready now for the outside. Loretta, Jane. Jackie still needs a little more time here, but she's making real progress. Goodbye. See you when you get cool? No, I don't want to see your ugly puss again. <laughs> I'm going to get a job. In California. The homeless found a nursery where Butchie can stay while I work. Gee, imagine me a working mother. Jason? 